Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the channel. Uh, today we're going to talk about a really fascinating topic that uh, a lot of people have been talking about. Uh, if you've paid attention to the news, you'll hear about Microsoft, uh, Facebook in particular, all using the term the metaverse. And uh, what we want to do today is to dive into the conversation, to have an understanding of what exactly the metaverse is uh, and why should we all pay attention to this concept as technology professionals? It's extremely relevant concept uh, for us to pay attention to. This could be either a fad that's going to come and go away, or it could be one of the seismic uh, shifts that we'll see in the technology space. But either way, we want to understand what it is, uh, understand some of the use cases, understand some of the challenges, some of the products that are involved, uh, so that as technology professionals, we can start seeing how this might uh, impact our business, impact our companies, impact the things that we do, impact our careers, uh, for that matter. So uh, Metaverse is a very extremely uh, important concept. Now, when we look at Metaverse, and we're going to dive right in uh, straight away, there is something that is, we, we shout out to us, right? There is a meta part, and then there is a verse part, right? You think about the universe, right? So now instead of the universe, which is everything that is around us, now there's this whole idea of a metaverse. But what is meta? Well, how do we always use the term meta? How do we uh, define that? You know, if we just go back, uh, just move the screen here for a second to think about how we, uh, where we might have heard about the term meta, uh, a common place would be uh, data, right? And you hear about meta data. So what is metadata? Metadata is data about data. So this is where meta comes from. Meta is uh, information about information. So usually you use meta in terms of you want something that describes something else. It's a representational description of something. So let's say if you have a friend and you give your friend uh, uh, 10 oranges to friend one and you have another friend, friend two, and you give this friend two 15 oranges right let's just call these oranges and then let's say you have friend three and to friend three instead of 15 oranges you give them let's say five uh five uh, pineapples right this is information you've given to your friends now if you go somewhere and keep a record of this and say hey uh friend one has 10 uh, uh friend two has 15 uh friend three has Five, so let's do P-O-O, -O, right? This data that you're keeping track of is meta, is metadata, because it's not the actual 10 oranges you've given your friend, but it's data about data. It's data about the fact that this friend has 10 oranges. This too is data about the fact that this friend has 15 oranges. So whenever we have data, that talks about representational data, that talks about our actual underlying data, we call this metadata. We call this metadata. So that's where meta comes from. Now, this with just this uh, brief description, let's uh, take this off the screen. With just this brief description of metadata, let's see how it translates into the world of metaverse. And why folks like Mark Zuckerberg and Microsoft and, and a lot of people are really talking about it. Metaverse. Uh, the, the verse about the verse, uh, if I could put it that way. It's, it's, it's um, instead of data about data is, I would say, almost like reality about reality. Because if you think about this as a universe, the metaverse is the verse about the verse. So that's how I would define it. But we're going to go into that into, in, into more details. Before we dive into it, let's see from a computational perspective what humans have been trying to do for the longest time. So we have a human here and we have our world here, the world we live in, the world we interact with. Humans have invented machines in the middle to help us interact with our world. So in here could be uh, writing on pieces of paper um, to store information about the world. So if I went for a hunt, if I'm a hunter here back in the uh, hunter gathering uh, uh, days, I hunted and I killed, you know, uh, let's say three giraffes or four antelopes. And I want to write that. I want to tell my village that we've killed four antelopes. I go into my paper here. I can write four antelopes 
and I store this. And so this is my paper, right? And this now is storing information about the world. So this is where I kill the four antelopes in the real world. And this is me, but I can use this medium and we can write here a medium. And I can use this medium, bear with me, it's a little bit challenging to write. Uh, I can use this medium in the middle to store information about the world. So here would be a piece of paper we can write on. And then eventually we had silicon. Silicon came in and ushered the computer. And we could, instead of writing on pieces of paper, I can store that information on a, a computer chip. I can store that information on a phone. I can store that information on some device somewhere. And so this is the world we've lived, to, uh, lived with, where we're looking for these mediums to help us with the human computer interface. So humans, um, and this is the computer, uh, the interface that allows us to interact with the world. An extremely, extremely important thing that we've been doing for the longest time. That's why we have cell phones in our pocket. Well, why do you have a cell phone? Well, because you can open up the cell phone and you can get updates on your bank statements. You can look at your health record. You can talk to your friend. Uh, it's the interface to our world, to the world around us. So if we look at the real world as existing somewhere here and we exist here, this interface allows us to interact with the real world. Now, how do we even take this one step further? Instead of just interacting with the real world, what if we could be part of that world? What if we could be immersed into that world? Not just interacting with the world like, you, let's say you take a cell phone as an example, and you push, you give an input to the cell phone, the cell phone sends it to the world, the world maybe reacts to it, and then gives you an output back to your cell phone, and your output sends that back to you, right? This is what we've been doing. So uh, input this way, coming into the world, um, and the world maybe responds, you send out a tweet and somebody responds to it and back on your phone, you get a notification about your tweet. You take a look at it and you can see the result. But what this does is you are not part of the world. We are not part of the world. We still have this interface and this interface comes with a certain amount of latency. So I have to put an input into my tweet and or into my phone. My phone sends it to some servers. Somebody interacts with it and I sit in my basement and I can see the result but you're not part of the world, okay? And that's where this medium, this medium has faced a lot of limitations. So let's go ahead and clean up the screen uh, here. This medium has faced a lot of limitations because it's slow, it's expensive, it's time consuming. And frankly, uh, this, the question people are asking is, well, why just putting input into the world if we can, if we can, let's just clear things up here a little bit. If we can go and be a part of that world, if we can go and be a part of the world, and that's the question that we're going to be asking and answering here today. So again, let's do a little bit of cleanup here to get some more real estate. Just bear with me. Let's just get some more real estate here. Let's take out this big circle. All right. We're gonna move down here on the screen and we're gonna talk about the metaverse, the metaverse. And this is why looking at the challenges we've seen above of innovating, of, of removing the latency or the friction between the humans going to some interface or some medium and interacting with the real world and just waiting for responses to come back. What the metaverse is saying is, can we be immersed into that world? Can we have an endless connectivity into the world? I'm going to talk about what this all looks like. And the concept of a metaverse is not a new concept. You might be saying, but, well, we came from screens, so phones and screens and pieces of paper. Uh, we went to VR, virtual reality, where uh, you wear a mask on your face and you, you, your world is projected to your face virtually. So that's what virtual reality is. Uh, to the world of uh, augmented reality, which is AR, uh, where in this world, not only are things being projected to your face, but uh, things are being projected into your actual surrounding. So uh, you, you can walk into a room and you can see 
information about all the things that are in the room in their current position in 3D. So it's not just projected to your face, but you're seeing them actually in the room floating in three dimensions the way it should be. So that's what our AR does for us. And there's been a lot of devices that have helped us to uh, get to this point. So we're talking about headsets, phone, sensors, applications, 3D devices. So many things have helped us in this area. Now, the metaverse is taking this one step further. It's saying, let's take all of this innovation that has happened here and uh, coupled with things like 5G that gives us extreme connectivity to really immerse ourselves into the real world to immerse ourselves into the real world, to have an immersive, endless, interconnected experience in the real world. Like, uh, it, it, we're not separated from the real world where we send input and we expect output. We are part of the real world. And this is what the metaverse is. Now, I know trying to describe that could be a little bit dry. You might say, but what does it mean to be immersed into the real world? What does it mean to have this immersive, cohesive, connected experience into, in the real world? You know, it's just like uh, the analogy I'll give here uh, when describing this to some of my other students was, you know, just imagine I was trying to describe to somebody back in like the 60s to say, hey, the cell phone or the computer will allow us to have this interconnected experience with anyone anywhere in the world. And the person will sit and say, but I, I don't understand. What do you mean an interconnected experience? Well, if you want to see somebody, you go see them in their house. What does this interconnected experience mean for, for me, right? They, they couldn't grab speed, uh, grab speed at the time. And that's one of the things where, you know, as we're kind of getting used to this uh, idea of the metaverse, it's still a big promise out there. No one knows if this is going to come into reality. There's a question if we can actually instantiate that, if we can actually realize the promise of the metaverse. But if we do, if we do, this will be a game changer from a technology perspective. All right, so... That said, maybe a couple of examples here would help us understand, really grasp the idea from just theory of this interconnectedness, the immersive experience, endless connectivity. Let's look at some examples of how companies can take advantage of this. And I'm hopefully that will drive the point home. So a couple of examples that we have here, uh, here on the screen, just bear with me to clean up a couple of things here. We want to clean this up. All right, so let's um, let's take a look at the example that we have here on the screen. And just bear with me. Um, I think we have a little bit of uh, some drawing uh, not behaving the way it should behave. Uh, this is how technology sometimes behaves. So let's just clean this up a little bit so we can see the actual um, uh, things that we're trying to see here and I'm just going to clean this up. Just bear with me guys uh, Let's just clean this up a little bit so we can see the drawing we intended to see uh, here And then we can clean this up. I'm going to redraw it uh, here in a second So the very first use case that we have is uh, one around buildings around construction and And how this idea of a metaverse could be a game changer in this space so if you think about building today, how it's done from uh, someone trying to build a city, trying to build a house, an apartment, or, or you know, a very big uh, story complex. The current approach is you draw, you have your drawing on 2D papers, right? Or you sketch them out with an architect. You have those 2D uh, rendering on pieces of paper. Uh, you might even take it one level and you mock that up in a 3D software, cut kind of software to get more visual perspective from a 3D perspective uh, in your computer. And now you have some artifacts like this, which is a drawing. Uh, and you can look at the pieces of paper. You can look at, look at the software in, uh, in, the, in the computer. And you have an idea of what that building is about. And then you hand that over to your builders and they go out and they build that building. But guess what we're missing in that building? If anyone has ever walked into a building, you know, looking at the building on a piece of paper tells you nothing about what that building will look like in real world. So what about the sunrise? How does it reflect on the windows in that building? What about the sounds on the road? How does it feel when you walk into that building and cars are going by or the train is coming by? How do you get that immersive experience in the building by looking at a piece of paper? 
All right. So this old idea of looking at pieces of paper doesn't really help us here. And this is where the idea of the metaverse could be game changing for building. Because you can imagine as a builder, you can have this construction embedded into a metaverse where people can take a trip into that metaverse using uh, some gadget on their face, thinking about the Oculus Rift or something coming from from Microsoft and you get an immersive experience. You can actually walk down the hallways. You can sit there and see the sunrise and the sunset. You can feel how it looks claustrophobic. Like if there are many people in that building, how does it feel from an experience perspective? You can see how the lighting works uh, and how the sun reflects rays of the windows, right? And this gives you a more truer, richer, deeper experience than just looking at pieces of papers um, uh, from, a, from a sketch or 2D rendering. So a metaverse could be a, a really game changer for contractors or for people who are looking to buy buildings, people who are looking to rent. You could actually uh, take a trip into the metaverse, experience the building and say for yourself, does this work for me? Does it not work for me? And you can make that decision in a more richer fashion, right? So we have our building here. Right now, we don't have just 2D experiences or 3D experiences for matter. We have 4D experience. We have real life experience and 4D really meaning your three dimension plus time, which is you being embedded into it, and it gives us that four D, five D type of experience. So, from a contract, from a building perspective, uh, metaverse could be a very, very fascinating uh, 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 innovation to happen in that space. Another area that could be very powerful too is the area of manufacturing. So, let's just clean that up. You know, a lot of companies they do manufacturing, and manufacturing today drives the world we live in. Almost everything that we use, we interact with, was manufactured by in some form, right? But the current approach, if you think about yourself as some manufacturing executive and you have a manufacturing floor or manufacturing plant and you're trying to drive efficiencies around that, we have to rely on reports. We have to rely on dashboards. We have to rely on pictures and videos and images. Now, these are great innovations for you to sit and you can get a report about the parts that are failing and with some good AI, you can predict uh, failures of those parts using machine learning and some really good models. You can have video feeds coming from your, your manufacturing line and you can monitor that from your headquarters, how, those, uh, how your manufacturing is doing. But that's all great and good. But what about a more immersive experience? So think about an executive in, in a company, your manufacturing devices, your manufacturing cars, uh, you, maybe your Elon Musk and there is something going on in the manufacturing floor and instead of you waiting for a report that comes and tells you how many parts were successful how many parts fails or a dashboard or some predictive analytics you can actually take that immersive trip you can walk down the manufacturing floor you can pick up the parts themselves you can look at the parts you can understand what is going on what is wrong uh with those parts uh, in real time. So you're not doing this after the fact. You're not waiting for reports to come two hours later or dashboards that get refreshed three hours later. You are there real time, but you, you're not really on the floor. You're sitting in the corporate office, but you can take the trip into the metaverse and interact with your manufacturing floor. You can see the defects. You can see the parts as they're being made. You can look at the flaws and meet your Lean Sigma goals uh, by just diving into the, into, into the metaverse and having this uh, immersive experience. It could be very, very transformational from a manufacturing perspective. Another one that we have here is entertainment. We can't talk about metaverse without really metaverse with the cons with you know with Facebook at the back of our mind without really thinking about concerts, events, um, entertainment. This is a, a huge industry where the metaverse could be very, very disruptive. So think about the current way of uh, concerts happening today, your favorite musician is coming to town and what do you do? All right. You, you might be, you might be in London, you might be in Australia. The, the show is happening in Texas. The show is happening in, in, in LA. Now you got to buy a ticket. You got to travel from, from Australia to, to LA. Uh, you got to ignore all the social distancing things that we've, we, that are really, really important today. Right. And you got to go against physics and time because uh, if you have a show in LA, right, and you have another show in San Francisco, and you have a show in New York, uh, you cannot be in all of these shows at the same time, all right? Unless you can really defy physics, you are limited by, by the, the, the limitations of physics, of space and time. So this means that there is going to be trade-offs. 
you can attend just a number of shows, one or two shows in a day. If you are a musician producing, you can only be in one concert at the same time, in at the same place, in one location. But welcome to the world of the metaverse. Now, instead of you physically traveling and, and dealing with all of this real world stuff, organize your concert in the metaverse. You can invite anyone, anywhere in the world. Uh, it's timeless, right? There's no physics limitation. People from Australia, people from Canada, people from New Zealand, people from Africa, from anywhere in the world can show up. It's safe. There is no social distancing. They are showing up into the metaverse. They sit where they are in their real world. But in this metaverse, you have this immersive experience that everyone can show up. And now you can scale that unlimitedly. So instead of your show having a venue of 10,000 people, well, this becomes mute. This is a, it's not a relevant uh, metric to care about because why 10,000 people versus the entire universe of 7 billion people, right? So now you can scale uh, without any limitations if you start having the shows in uh, a metaverse type of experience versus the traditional uh, physical experience which we've had. So think about how musicians today or how artists today or how entertainers today can take advantage of a metaverse experience and host their shows host their concerts, uh, invite people into that, into that experience, into this virtual world and, and truly, and truly, and truly disrupt how we, we, we do entertainment and how we, uh, we have events around. And there's even talks about, you know, if people are showing up into this metaverse for a concert, well, what t-shirts do they wear? Right? Because if I think about myself or, or, or for a lot of people around, if you're going to say a sports game in, in your local town, right? A sports game. This is something that a lot of people love. Your, your, your local sports team. Guess what you need? You want a t-shirt. You want your jersey. You want uh, you want the branded uh, gear to wear f to support your, your sports team or to support your musician. Well, now, as part of the metaverse, if you are not physically going, then what happens to all of this, right? There is, this is, companies make a lot of money selling merchandise. So would this all disappear? No. And this is where we're seeing a lot of companies are coming up and saying, you know what? Let's uh, make virtual uh, uh, attires for the metaverse. So if you're going to support your sports team, you can, in the metaverse, buy. And guess what? I say buy with a capital B-U-Y because companies love it when people buy. So you can buy a virtual T-shirt to support your team as part of this metaverse experience. And so... A lot of companies were thinking, we're talking about uh, uh, clothing companies, brands, uh, attires are all paying attention to this. If if uh, the executives and Nike and Adidas and Pumas are not paying attention to the metaverse, I, I can tell you that uh, uh, somebody somewhere might be asking questions at some point why why they weren't. Because if this becomes the dream that it promises to be, there is a lot of there's a lot of money uh, to be made. Uh, from just not just the experience that's being hosted, but the sales uh, that can happen from a merchandise perspective uh, uh, within within that metaverse to uh, you know complete this uh, full circle. Now a couple more examples here, and then we're gonna bring this home. I think this has been a longer a longer lecture. Uh, let's go into just a very high level some other uh, potential use cases. Uh, that, uh, you know, we're seeing the metaverse being really, really relevant. So here we have gaming is another area. I'm not a big gamer myself, but I know there's a, there are a lot of people who are gamers, right? This is not nothing to joke about. There are people who actually make careers out of gaming. Um, and it's a, it's a huge sector in, 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 in the industry, in the economy. So uh, Fortnite and many others, people are having very immersive gaming experiences, um, and you can transport that into a metaverse that could really be game changer. Uh, education, something that is, is I really care about a lot. Think about how we can transform uh, lower education, higher education, uh, field training uh, by using a metaverse. So um, uh, an example here could be Toyota, right? They're trying to train uh, their technicians uh, on how to repair specific parts of, of the cars. Instead of you... Uh, going to class and going through the boring lecture that a lot of people have come to complain about, 
you can actually send your, your students. You can immerse people into a metaverse where they get to walk around, they see the machines, they look at the parts, they look at the engine, they can see the manifolds that are having issues. Uh, they can learn how to fix it in a very immersive, uh, richer experience with the metaverse, with the teacher by their side and um, while sitting from uh, in their bedroom. Right. So this could really be uh, huge from an education perspective and not just, uh, you know, manufacturing. Think about just understanding uh, physics or philosophy. Uh, can you go into a metaverse and have a conversation with, with, with Immanuel Kant, uh, with Karl Popper, uh, with uh, Albert Einstein and some of those people that might not be alive today? But in the metaverse world, we can have the avatars come to life and you can interact with them and have conversations with Albert Einstein instead of waiting for your teacher to tell you about Albert, Albert Einstein. So this could be huge. And I'm sure there are companies that are really, uh, you know, I, I would say positioning themselves to take advantage of this and to disrupt and to innovate in this space. Medicine is another one too that is just beyond, beyond, beyond uh, huge uh, for uh, and ripe for opportunity for a metaverse. Uh, now, surgeons, if you think about medical school and how you learn how to do surgery, you know, you got to use cadavers, you got to use animals and a lot of things. Well, what if you can learn surgery by, uh, by you know, looking at a, a metaverse of uh, an avatar of a human and you can learn surgery that way and you can train uh, many, many people to become surgeons, not just the ones that are going to medical school, but if I wake up today and I want to learn how to do heart surgery, I can go into a metaverse and start performing heart surgery there. Right now, there is little risk. No one is going to die You in a virtual world but I can learn how to be a heart surgeon. Now, where that becomes handy for you, who knows? You might be in a jungle somewhere and you need to do heart surgery on, uh, on something. All right, that's just one example. Another example could just be, you know, uh, again, uh, training how to, uh, uh, if you think about physical therapy, that could all be done in the metaverse where you can immerse yourself into this experience. Uh, you can work on your knee or some part of your body that's hurt, uh, hurting. And you can have an experience there. So medicine, there is a, a huge promise from a metaverse perspective. Uh, government uh, is another area too where metaverse concept could be huge. If you think about the census, if you think about uh, education, government is very involved in education as well, right? How do we educate the students about civics? How do we educate the students about history? If you think about here in the U.S., there was a there was a civil war, the American Civil War that was fought. There was the Battle of Gettysburg, right? Uh, if I, I wouldn't try to spell that, but there was a battle called Gettysburg. Now, uh, you, you're teaching that to students. What you can immerse them? Instead of a, a teacher just playing a video or a re, uh, re, uh, reenactment, you can actually immerse the students, bring them to Gettysburg, walk them around the, 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 the rows and the hedges that were there, see the, the, the soldiers as they were fighting, the North and the South, and really give them that true, richer experience, which is way, 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 way better than what a video would ever show you or what reading a textbook would ever show you. This could be a game changer from an educational perspective, from a civic perspective, uh, um, you know, and really, really amazing. Uh, think about voting, which is another big thing. Well, instead of voting where you have to be at one uh, uh, um, uh, voting station at one time, well, what if you can... Uh, um, have a voting experience where uh, you can choose whatever voting station you want and you can go there and you can vote and you can also walk around to other voting stations from a metaverse perspective and monitor those voting stations and be like a, uh, an auditor in, in those voting stations at, without any limitation in time and physics. I think the promise here is just huge from a government perspective. Research and development is another area too where people are looking to create new devices, create new uh, 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 create new uh, innovations. Uh, can we isolate the risky innovations and carry out those experiments in the metaverse instead of the real world, right? Instead of killing monkeys and, 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 and chimpanzees to do our experiments with drugs, can we, uh, in the real world, create those, uh, um, um, the animals or whatever we need for those experiments and do those experimentations in, uh, in the metaverse instead of the real world where, you know, lives are at risk and you know animals uh, get to suffer all right like drug discovery like new drugs can we experiment with new drugs uh, on people in the metaverse um that doesn't affect real people in the real world but we still get uh, a very simulated near or very relevant um result in that space so 
this could be huge. Think about new planes or machines, right? Companies are always looking to create new planes and fly. Well, if you're going to create a new plane and fly it with 300 people on board, you better make sure that plane is well tested. Okay, you don't, you're not going to come into a real world and put 300 people on your, on your plane and fly around and crash and uh, that would just not be uh, acceptable today. Okay, but in the, in the metaverse, can you uh, innovate, create your own plane with new designs? Anyone can do it from anywhere. Uh, put a bunch of uh, people from a metaverse and experiment with that. Well, if if it doesn't go well and there is a crash, guess what? It's it's the metaverse, so no one gets hurt. And uh, this could really spur innovation in different areas. We're thinking about manufacturing. We're thinking about just pure innovation from a hardware perspective, even as well as a software perspective. Medicine, drug discovery. There's uh, the potential here is huge. Uh, going to entertainment uh, here. Last but not least, we talked about this. Uh, a lot of people, when we think about Facebook and the metaverse, we always think about entertainment. For me, uh, Facebook uh, really pushing this is an entertainment company. It's a media company um, uh, or a platform, you would say. Um, and they have a lot of things at stake for entertainment. So talking about concerts, events, uh, games, shows, uh, movies, uh, and all of that uh, could really be transformed by, by the metaverse experience where you can go inside and you could be a part of it we're no longer just uh, people on the outside using interfaces to interact with the world. We are part of the world in that metaverse experience. So this is what the promise of metaverse is. We've seen the use cases. Now, just to bring this home here with some three things that I, I talked about or I listed here that we need to watch out for. Because you might be saying, well, but Fru, how how is this going to instantiate? What will make this real? To me, there was this concept that is relevant in any technology uh, from a corporate world, and I, I think will be extremely relevant here when talking about this whole idea of a metaverse, uh, of what needs to happen for this to come uh, into reality. Number one, there's, there's going to be some changes and innovation around people, processes, and tools. So PPT. People meaning the communities have to be built. People have to get acceptance and be a part of the metaverse. You're not going to go into the metaverse and be by yourself. It's a whole new world we're building in a virtual experience, and we need those communities around there. We need the engineers to be a part of it. We need the doctors to be a part of this. We need the, the concert goers to be a part of this. We need the brand uh, uh, companies who are making uh, attires to be a part of this. We need the architects and the builders to be a part of this. So people need to be a part of this uh, for this to come to reality. The processes need to change. There are cultural norms today that are going to have to change for this to, to become a reality, right? So culturally, do we think about, when you think about going to a concert and having that experience on a Sunday morning, a Sunday afternoon, or, or, or Saturday football game, do you think about you coming into your living room and putting on a gadget to have this virtual experience, or do you think about getting into a car and driving to some field or stadium somewhere? Now, cultural experiences or cultural norms and expectations have to change. Um, and this is where we have them under processes for this to become a reality. It's not going to be useful if Facebook makes a, the, an amazing uh, Oculus Rift and no one wants to wear it to go to a game because you'd rather go to the game in person. So just having an expectation that this, the success of all of this relies on, on the cultural norms and, and the expectations that we have uh, around this really changing. And then not to talk about the technology, because when we talk about uh, metaverse uh, as a technology channel is easy and I would say convenient to always look at it from a technology perspective, right? What are the hardware innovations that are happening? What are the, the, the connectivity innovations around 5G and, and a millimeter wave and, and uh, high bandwidth that are coming around here? And it's easy to talk about this, this side of things, the technology innovations that are happening, the new softwares that are happening, cloud computing and all of that. Right, quantum computing that's going to happen to facilitate all of this. So, but we cannot forget the processes that this is just, it's not just technology. There's some cultural aspects to this that are going to have to change. And people and the communities have to be built to make this happen. Just like the way people have built vast, vast amount of communities to play video games online, and you have the esports and, and a lot of that really taking hold. Uh, gamers are really building amazing communities around here, bloggers are building communities. We're going to have a community of, of people who experience their life in the virtual world, right? So, and there are products that are already being built to make that happen. 
So Microsoft has, uh, let's just take a look at some two products here from a technology perspective. Microsoft has a HoloLens. Uh, um, you know, we know Facebook has an Oculus Rift. And there are many, many companies that are coming up with new gadgets and devices that you can put them here. But again, technology is just a piece of it. Products are just a piece of it. Software is just going to be a piece of it. There's the people, the processes, and the technologies that are going to have to change as a whole for this to happen. Now, we're going to leave us in the lecture here with this deja vu. You might say, ah, oh, Fro, this is, a, a, this is such an interesting, fascinating topic. I love it. Now, if you enjoy it, and, and for most people, I'm sure you might have watched this movie, uh, The Matrix. Uh, there is a Second Life, which was, I think, I don't know if there's a movie around that or if, if it was just an app that was, uh, that came up a little bit in the 2000s, early in the 2000s, somewhere around there. But The Matrix is definitely a movie I would recommend you watch. I, I'm not going to try to explain it here. I'm not really a movie uh, reviewer. I'm not good at that. But if you watch this movie, it kind of is hinting at, at where we're going, the concept of where we're going, because this talks about this whole idea of this a physical world. There is uh, the virtual world, which in this case is The Matrix. The metrics, and you can decide to go in or out of that, right? And there's the red pill and the blue pill and all of that. I'm not going to go into, into the details of that. But uh, really watch this metric, at this movie. I think it will give an idea of, of some of the science fiction that we used to have that seems to be coming into reality. Uh, there have been attempts at doing what, what we're seeing here today, promised by the metaverse that Facebook is really pushing now. And uh, Microsoft are all trying to be a part of it. Um, and... The second life with avatars and all of that. I believe this initial phase did not really take off. And if you ask me why it didn't take off, I would say it was probably because of the first two parts. The people and the processes really weren't there. Technology might have been there somehow, but but the people and the processes culturally it just really wasn't there for people to have a second life or to have these virtual avatars that represented their real life. Uh, but given all that we see with uh, with video games and and the uh, 5G that has improved the connectivity and the low latency that we have around uh, our gadgets. Uh, it, it does seem like it's time where, you know, people and the processes uh, and technology have all merged into this whole unison that can make this uh, come true. So uh, just something to have at the back of the mind as you're kind of thinking about this, uh, not just from a technology perspective, but also from a cultural perspective and some of the movies and videos that have been talking about this to us for a very long time. And it might just be the time where uh, this is all coming to reality. And with Facebook putting its weight behind that and Microsoft and a lot of these big companies are uh, really joining the bandwagon on, on the metaverse, uh, would it be surprised if this becomes a reality? Uh, it might be something that becomes a reality for uh, at the corporate level, or it might even be uh, to consumer level. Who knows where it's going to really take hold first? But the promise is definitely there. The promise is definitely there. As a technology professional, metaverse is something I wouldn't ignore. I would definitely pay attention to it, understand how it impacts my life, whether it's education, entertainment, uh, culturally, government, some way, somehow, this is going to affect us. It's going to affect you. Uh, and so it's really, really worth uh, understand, understanding this and, and, and paying close attention to it. All right, guys. So there you have it. This brings us to the end of the lecture. Hopefully this was helpful. There are lots and lots of uh, 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 articles around Metaverse online that you can definitely check out. Uh, do check them out. Um, if you have any questions about this, don't hesitate. Leave them in the comment section below. We'll see what we can do. Uh, if you enjoyed this, share this with somebody that might get value out of it. Um, I have been through your lecturer today. Uh, you have been very awesome watching to the end. Appreciate that. Um, and we'll see you in our next lectures.